Hi everyone, Leon here. Welcome back to my channel where I share key learning from books to help you achieve more in less time. So let's dive right into the book of the week. This book is called The Chimp Paradox by Professor Steve Peters. Have you ever wondered how your mind works? Or why are some people happier than others over the same thing that happened to them? How can you manage your thoughts and emotions and improve the quality of your life? If these are some of the things you've thought of, then this book, The Chimp Paradox, has the answers to your questions. Professor Steve Peters shared with us the chimp model where it's based on complex science, simplified to help you understand and manage your mind. This model focuses on three parts of the brain, the frontal, limbic and parietal. They are also called the human, chimp and computer respectively in this model. To understand how our mind works, we first have to understand these three parts of the brain and how they work. First, you are the human, and this part of the brain interprets information through logical thinking. Humans plan and take actions based on facts and truth. They work with evidence and are rational. They are able to have a balanced judgement and often able to accept shades of grey, and things are not always in black and white. Humans also have a diversity of agenda, ranging from finding their purpose in life to building a society of peace and harmony and many more. Second, the chimp is an emotional machine and relies on emotions rather than logic to think and act. They are often quick to form an impression or conclusion based on little information. They think in black and white and can be unforgiving and stubborn. They are usually irrational and paranoid because the chimp's main agenda is perpetuation of species and survival. Therefore, the ability to form quick conclusions can be a useful indication for us to know what to do at times, even when it might not always be reliable. Third, the computer is a storage for behaviours and beliefs that human or chimp puts into it. It does not have any thinking or interpretation of its own and will only act on stored information input by either the human or chimp. When an experience occurs, both the human and chimp will refer to it for guidance on what to do. Therefore, it's a source that serves to help us think and act automatically based on what we have programmed into it. It's very fast and powerful, so we have to be mindful of what we program into it. The more we input it with positive beliefs and values, the more positively it will affect our lives. Same with the negatives. One thing to note is that any one of these three parts of our brain can take complete control over us, but they usually work together. So let's take a look at how they work to affect our minds and our actions as a result. The information will always be received by the chimp first. Then the chimp offers the human its interpretation of the information. If the human agrees, then all is okay. If the human disagrees, then the chimp will likely misbehave and wants to take control of your decisions. In most cases, they will likely win because they are five times stronger than the human. This is where you need to understand that it's much more effective in the long run to manage your chimp instead of controlling it. Because when you're up against someone who is five times stronger than you, there's little chance of overpowering it with mere strength. So how can we manage our chimp? Professor Steve Peters offered two aspects of handling our chimp. The first is to nurture it before managing it. Put it in a happy place by looking after its needs. You'll have an easier time talking to it when it feels safe, calm and happy. It is important to take care of ourselves emotionally so we don't suffer the consequences of pent up feelings. Next is to manage our chimp and we can do it in three ways. The first way is to exercise your chimp. It means that if your chimp is agitated or upset about something, allow it to release its emotion or opinion and ramble for as long as it takes. However, take note to do it in a private place because you don't want to cause any inconvenience to the people around you. And when the chimp is done or tired, the human will now have an easier time to talk to it and calm it down. 
The second way is boxing the chimp. This is usually done by using facts, truths and logic when the chimp has finished exercising or is tired. These must be meaningful to your chimp so it can accept them and calm down. You may have to repeat this several times though in order to find out which truths are meaningful to your chimp. The third way is to feed it bananas. These things that the chimp wants act as either distractions or reward. Distraction is a set of rapid actions or an action that prevents your chimp from thinking and it must be activated quickly. For example, if you want to get out of your bed fast in the morning without sleeping in, have a set of actions in mind that you'll do when you wake up and execute it immediately before the chimp gets to think. A reward could be like an incentive for the chimp to stop you from procrastination. For example, the chimp may want some dessert instead of writing a book summary, and that made you procrastinate. What you can do here is to tell your chimp that it will have its dessert after finishing the summary and it will stop bothering you for a while. Remember that even though you're not responsible for the nature of your chimp, you are responsible for managing your chimp. And managing it may take time, effort and a series of challenges. However, the results will be worth it if you train your chimp well. If you like this summary, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell to be notified of my weekly learnings. And if you like a one-page PDF summary, click the link in the description below. I thank you for watching, wish you well, and see you in the next video.